Back at Google I.O., you probably caught Google's jabs at Apple for failing to adopt RCS. But what is RCS? How does it compare to what iMessage offers? And is it time for Apple to support RCS on iPhones? Let's take a look. There's no denying that iMessage offers a great experience most of the time. It's not perfect, but if you send a message from one iPhone to another, the additional features iMessage brings with it offer a much improved user experience. These include typing indicators, high quality photo transfers over the internet, and more. The experience is made even better with iMessage on other devices. If you get sent a message, you can read it and reply to it on your iPhone, iPad, or Mac. Now, there are some issues with iMessage. I've had an issue where one contact shows up as multiple different people in a group conversation, one with their iCloud email and one with their phone number. But these issues are pretty minor compared to the dramatic user experience improvements that come from the service. Before we go into RCS and iMessage though, let's talk about why these newer services are needed. The limitations of SMS and MMS messages. SMS stands for Short Message Service, while MMS stands for Multimedia Message Service. SMS is the standard texting that's been around for decades. It supports up to 160 characters, so a bit more than tweets used to be, and over 100 less than tweets currently are. MMS builds on top of SMS with, as the name implies, multimedia messages. This includes up to 40 seconds of video, images, or audio messages. The commercial adoption of MMS began in the early 2000s, while you could send photos, MMS has some rather restrictive size limitations. These limitations can vary by the carrier, but are typically around one megabyte. So in order to send a photo or video, it must be heavily compressed. Photos, well, they'll probably end up looking okay at the end, but videos, yeah, good luck. You've probably seen quite a few videos sent to you that end up looking like this. One megabyte just is not enough storage for good looking video. There are also security and reliability issues with SMS messages, with many being lost and spoofing too easy. So what about iMessage? Well, iMessage fixed almost all of these issues. As far as security and reliability, iMessage is a night and day improvement over previous standards, utilizing end to end encryption. As far as features, iMessage adds read receipts, so the senders know that their message went through and can see when the recipient read it. And iMessage works over the internet, so data really isn't the constraint that it used to be. iMessage will send uncompressed photos and attachments up to 100 megabytes. That's why you don't have the dramatic loss in quality when sharing videos from one iPhone user to another. But there's a solution to most of the problems of SMS and MMS that isn't tied to a single company like iMessages. And that's RCS. RCS, or Rich Communication Services, has been in progress for quite some time. Some of the first phones to support RCS launched from Samsung back in 2012. It offers many of the same features that iMessage brought, but in an open way that can be implemented on any phone, rather than being limited to those of a single manufacturer. RCS adds support for high quality photo sharing, video sharing, read receipts, typing indicators, end-to-end -end encryption, and even video calls. Many of the features that were special about iMessage are now commonly available on other devices. And I'm not trying to say RCS is perfect. It isn't. If carriers decide to run their own implementation rather than just using Google's Jive backend, it can be costly, and if not properly implemented, has some security issues. AT&T's initial implementation led to incompatibilities with the RCS Universal Profile, which is the standard implementation used by Google and others that guarantees compatibility. But it's a dramatic step forward for consumers, especially when the alternative is SMS or MMS. So why is Apple against RCS? Apple hasn't implemented RCS support on the iPhone, and it's not hard to understand why iMessage's features work well on iPhones, but throw an Android phone into the mix and you can expect some utterly awful group chats with reactions sending as additional messages and the person with the Android phone being the cause for the dreaded green bubble. That's because the iPhone reverts back to SMS and MMS when communicating with Android devices. This creates some additional pressure for those with Android phones to switch over to Apple devices. 
If you want to send high quality photos, enjoy group FaceTimes, and not be the odd one out in the group message, you need an iPhone. But if Apple implemented RCS as a fallback for when iMessage isn't available, much like how SMS and MMS are integrated now, it would create a better customer experience for iPhone users and Android users alike. Android phones and iPhones could send higher quality pictures back and forth. Messages would have read receipts, so you actually know that the recipient got what you sent them, and group messages up to 100 people could be supported. But Apple would lose some of that additional push to keep families and friends within their ecosystem. Some of this lock-in strategy came to light during Apple's lawsuit with Epic, when software chief Craig Federighi said that iMessage on Android would simply serve to remove an obstacle to iPhone families giving their kids an Android phone. Adding RCS to iMessage would similarly reduce this obstacle, but Google isn't looking to get iMessage on Android. Google just wants Apple to integrate the new industry standard that makes messaging better and more secure for everyone. And iMessage still has its advantages. The ability to use Apple Pay to send money back and forth, and the iMessage apps and games are still great iMessage specific features. And those with iPhones can still send messages from all their devices, iPhones, iPads, and Macs. Apple should continue to build its user base by continuing to innovate and create better devices, rather than relying on a lock-in strategy that relies on pushing others to a worse user experience. If Apple wants to put user experience first, RCS implementation is a clear step forward. So what do you think? Do you hope Apple will add RCS support to their devices? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, consider liking and subscribing.